friends, back to Day After Day Gaming. I'm Kat. And I'm Bobby. And today we are going to do an unboxing of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Now, I'm going to go over to you while I flip this box over so I can read it back. Okay. So, for everybody out there, this is a game by Awaken Realms. They've done several Kickstarters at this point. They did Tainted Grail. Uh, I don't remember what the one was before this. I have it somewhere. But they did a couple other games. They did another one recently that they released that I also have somewhere in here in my massive games. But uh, this one was earlier this year, I believe. We finished it, or it might have been late last year when the Kickstarter ended. And this just came in on Monday. So today we're going to do an unboxing because we haven't even opened the box. I took off the plastic. That's it. And hopefully once we kind of go through the rules, uh, maybe later this weekend we'll try to do a, a game stream if you're up for it. But until then, we at least want to show everybody the game, kind of show you what's in it. We have three different boxes. Uh, we are missing some of the pieces only because I got some of the add-ons, which aren't available yet. I chose to do a split shipping of this particular game for Tainted Grail. That way, I could go ahead and get the main game now. And then all the expansions and other add-ons that I purchased will be coming out a few months down the road. I think it was April, I want to say. But other than that, uh, we're going to have Cat read the back of the game, just so everybody kind of knows what it is, for anybody who hasn't seen anything on this game before. And then we will open up the box. Okay. So, Tainted Grail is a story-rich survival and exploration game for one to four players, set in a dark universe that blends Arthurian tale and Celtic mythology with a unique dark version. Vision. Blah. Each player controls one of four unlikely heroes who must face impossible odds where stronger and wiser champions have failed. Chased by the encroaching twists, twisted of power of the weirdness. I think it's weirdness. It's spelled a Y. Yeah, I think it's still be weirdness. Yes, twisted power of the weirdness. Fighting an uphill battle against depleting resources and challenging encounters. The characters set out to achieve the impossible and die many times in the process. A system of story triggers lets players see the long-term consequences of their actions, while a deep, branching storyline allows them to tackle problems in a different way, ensuring no two games play alike. Ask the back. I'm not going to read the entire list of components, because there's no point. But I will open this. Just give me a second. Mm. New game boxes are always tough to open. They're all, yes. Let's see. I give you this. Here's a roll book. Here's the exploration journal. Well, it could start showing stuff off as you pulled it out of the box. <laughs> You're right. You should just put it back. Is that there? Okay. Here, just turn it this way. That way it's right side up on the camera. Okay, okay. Here's where we start. It says start here. So, again, I'm giving this to you to read. Okay, okay. She doesn't like doing the reading part. I get stuck with that. Well, yeah, because I have my tongue always tying. So essentially, this is an open and play guide. Will help you set up and start your first single player adventure in Avalon, and teach you all the basic game rules. That's nice. So they have a little separate guide for learning, like a quick setup for the rules. Ooh, cool. And then we have the rules. Looks entirely like the cover, doesn't it? Yep. Except what? for the big word rule book on the bottom. Yeah, except for the big word rule book. Rule book. Yep. See, this Aura is why book. I say I didn't want to read it. She didn't even read it. I, I told it to you. I know I didn't. And then we have the exploration journal. This one's all taped up. Maybe I should undo the tape. He's undoing the tape. No, I'm going to leave it for now. We're not going to open it quite well. I guess I can open it. It's fine. I think it's just to protect the book so it doesn't get damaged on chipping. That makes sense. And then we have little letters here. I believe these are the four characters. Sorry, I'm making too much noise. 
I said, I believe these are the four characters. Each one of them seeming to have a letter. I'm just going to take a good guess that they're characters because there's a character thing right here and that's just one of the names I have in my hand. But it looks like we have... Well, I'm not going to pronounce any of these correctly, so sorry if I butcher, butcher these entirely. Do you want help? A lie. Yeah, I'll say it first and you can correct me. A lie. I don't know. A rev. This one I can say is maggot. <laughs> well, that's a good name. And what I'm going to guess is probably boar. So they all have numbers on the top. Yeah. Hmm. Then it looks like they have a map. So just to back up real quick, we had the rule book. It's actually a 24-page rule book. It is a very large rule book, as you can see. It's bigger than my head. Oh no, no cat to talk. But 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 but. but it has some cool talk. drawings in it too. They do a lot of uh, like drawings on the margins of the. Excalibur. Guide. I want to say that's Excalibur. It might be. It's pretty cool looking. I'm still working on the adventure book, so if you want to show the next okay. thing, that's fine. And it looks like we have little maps of the play area right here. Bring them a little closer. And we have four of them, so maybe one for each character, or maybe one for each party. I don't know, why don't you take one and open it and look at it? I can't open it, it's literally just a sheet of paper. Oh, I see. He's crazy, by the way. Well, am I crazy? Because I can't see what it was. Absolutely crazy. You have multiple pieces sitting there, I didn't know what it was. Maybe each person gets a map to look at, or it could be based on there's a save sheet here next. So maybe different parties could use different maps to like mark things on them. I don't know. I think I'm just going to say some of these and try to at least. So we have Moonring, Farshire, Kyungyakt, Timberwall, Crow's Nest, Tombs, and Camelot with a K. Ooh. There's secrets that are hidden in the game. Oh, there's secrets hidden in the game? It looks like he uses dice that says rolls and checks. Yeah, decoding secrets. Secrets are hidden so players don't read them by accident. They often include important mysteries of Avalon and its people. You should read secrets only when instructed to. You can find all of them in the book of secrets at the back of the journal. Oh, secrets? They have these three empty dials, so you have to actually put these uh, pieces in certain areas, and I guess they make words or runes or something. That you actually have to then follow in the back of the book to figure out what you're supposed to read. Oh, secrets? That's a terrible acting job right now. I don't care. It's secrets. And then he's right. We have a giant save sheet probably. Yeah, look right here. Look. There's skulls. You have to put the coins down. You get runes. You have to go to the back of the book when you read this section. That's nice, though. So instead of it being out to for everyone to see, it's kind of hidden in a different area. So um, unlike Gloomhaven, for example, where you see everything... <laughs> on the pages, including the characters and everything. The other uh, survival exploration co-op games have come out since, like Madara and uh, this one. And I think one other one maybe that we tried, looked at, uh, hide the information, the pertinent information somewhere else so you don't actually see it. In Madara, it actually is a red reviewer, remember? Yes. That you put over certain areas to read and see what happens. And in this one, it uses these code symbols so that you read important stuff in the back of the book. That's kind of cool, though. Then this is um, a safe sheet probably for each party, considering it has a slot for every character, I guess, since there's four sections probably for each player. Character notes. Things about quest styles, guardians, and min here. I don't know what those are, so just hand that over. The what? Min here. Min here? Min here. Min here. Huh. I'm going to guess it's min here. It's M-E-N-H-I-R. Well, it says a dial value, so that could be those turning uh, skull tokens or something, because there were three of those. Okay. So it might be what location you're at in the game. I've got the characters. Holy cow. I found the monsters. I also found these, so I'm taking these apart now. You're going to take those apart? Yep, your turn to do something in the box. D my turn to do something in the box. Wow. Wow. Yes, that's what I said. Were you not listening? Wow. I don't think he was listening. I was totally listening. 
Are you sure? You get the maps you just left here in the way, out of the way. I didn't leave anything in the way. Almost there. I promise. All right. I guess we'll just leave this in here. I don't think there's anything under it. I don't think there is either. I didn't know if there were tiles under it, so I thought I would look. No, nope, considering how deep these things are. Yeah, I'm not sure what goes in there. We'll make a good guess later. But I have got the characters. Look at that little bag's in there for storage. Bring out our four characters right here. They're six sided dice. One has directions on it east, south, west. I guess that's north. And then a blank side and an X. I don't like that X. X's are never a good thing. Maybe it determines like what movement you move or something? Maybe. Or how monsters move, maybe? And this is just the one through six, it looks like. Yeah, just the one through six dice. Okay, so here are our four characters. Maggot, Arev, Boar, and Eli. So, I, I found you can pop these things off. Huh. They flip over? And there's a back. It tells you a setup for them. Oh. So, Maggot, a renegade of the Druid Order, whose innate power are curbed by his destructive addiction to mixtures and mushrooms used by the Druids. So, is he an addict? That's what it sounds like. Yeah, he's an addict for mixtures and mushrooms used by Druids. I guess we should... <laughs> I guess I should go to the next one. Arev. Sorry if I'm butchering these names. His setup. A simple farmer with not so simple past. Years ago, as a young mercenary, he helped raise many village. He helped raise many villages and shrines to the ground. Now a mysterious curse follows him. He's got tattoos. And let's see who's our next victim to go look over into their past and other such. And on the back of the boards? Yes. Not, not the boards, the, the full board. Oh, okay, just pictures. Yes. Are the pictures different or are they all the same? Same. Okay. I don't know if maybe those four characters on the back, like each one would be brought forth, would have been cool. If each board was to fit that character. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because all the boards are the same except for the pictures, huh? And the outlining color. Oh, gotcha. This yeah, is you're brown, right. that's you're white, right. that's blueish, and that's greenish. I guess that's how you know what matches, then. Okay, who wants to bet Boar, the guy with the hammer, was once a blacksmith? Not me. I'm probably wrong. Ha! A local smith. Known for short temper and incredible strength, he does his best to conceal a festering, unhealable wound in his side that he received under mysterious circumstances. Sounds like he'd be dying the entire turn. Considering his, he conceals a festering, unhealable wound. Hmm. Ouch. Doesn't sound fun. And then our only female of the group, Lie. So, if we ever get around to playing this, you know who I'll probably be playing. The blacksmith. Who the heck? Maggot. Because you like his name. No. Oh. This one. An outcast whose entire family perished and the weirdness. She makes a modest living supplying healing herbs and roots to the locals. Okay, besides her greenish hair, first thing I think of is poison ivy. Because, like, really. She just changed the hair color and she's poison ivy. No red hair for you. 
Yeah. It also in the back shows your starting resources and your starting attributes for each character. And they vary. Hmm. Interesting. Now we're just going to take all, all of these away except for one to explain what's on the boards. So, I'm leaving the girl out because she's my favorite. What a surprise. You shouldn't be surprised. I'm not. Okay. So, on here, there are different things labeled. So, like, this one's called aggression, courage, practicality, empathy, caution, and spirituality. Then here, on these little lines, I'm going to guess I'll use the um, colorful cubes he found. Purple and red along two colors. I don't think there's a green one for energy, so. Didn't see one. And so this one's energy, health, and terror. Oh, and apparently if you have lots of terror and you're at five to six, you're going insane. If your health is at zero, you're dying. And if your energy is zero or one, you are exhausted. Fun times. Then down here at the bottom, I, we have a few other things like magic, experience, reputation, wealth, and food. And some of these, like um, a lie here, starts off with things. And I think she starts off with um, three food and one reputation. And then things for um, empathy, caution, practicality, and courage. But since I'm not fully sure what those mean right now, we're just going to... Flip her back over. But yeah. What's next? I'm trying to get characters out. They're kind of stuck. Ooh, give me them. Here's one. Is that one of the player characters? Yes. I think I have Orev, the farmer. Yes, this is Orev, the farmer with a giant sickle. Here's Maggot looking like a sorcerer. First thing I think of is Merlin, but his name is Maggot, so. Kind of reminds me of Avatar characters. The robes. And a long staff. Which Avatar characters? Which Avatar are we talking about? The cartoon. Okay, Avatar Last Airbender. Last Airbender, yeah. You're right, they do look like that. Kind of reminds me of, like some fighting monks or something. Mm-hmm, that's it. We have boar and his hammer. Such a boar. Yep. And lie and her staff looks like herbs. She got a big walking stick. Pretty much. Is that what her picture has? What is it? I didn't get a good look at it. It is a staff covered in vines. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. I wasn't kidding. No, you're right. Ooh, we've got monsters in here, too. We do. I was going to work on that, taking them out next. Want me to get it out? You're having trouble. She's having trouble. I'll just get them out and hand them to you. I think that would be easier. So it looks like we have a guy with a double-edged. I think it's double-edged. Yeah, a double-edged spear, I guess. Where? Yeah, it does kind of look like a double One side longer spear. than the other. Holding a lantern, an axe, and what looks to be an empty hand. <laughs> okay, he just found a card that says, you are going insane. I think I mentioned this a little while ago about how you can go insane. Yeah, right? So, it's when your terror goes up to five or six, you're going insane. So, this guy looks like a boss. Kind of dressed in warrior attire. And then next it kind of looks like we've got Grim Reapers, in my opinion. Three of them, actually. Each a little bit strange. All of them have a weird little section below them, like someone will fit there. 
not sure what that means, though, since they've got little holes right here. Where? Right here. Oh, areas below the metal? Dugged out circles. So I'm just going to explain some of these. This one right here seems to have multiple hands, maybe holding the Holy Grail, a sword in one hand, and he seems to be hugging himself quite a bit. And it also looks like he's got bones sticking out down his arms right here. That's one. Our next one seems to be holding a candle raised in the air, raised in the air by hands tied together. All three of these are holding swords. They're all skeletons too. This one is also holding a candle, but the thing is, you can see straight through this one's stomach. I guess he's undead. Must be a skeleton. They're all undead. They're oh, both they're all, all undead? undead. Oh. Look, their backside, literally all you can see is bones. I have a thing for encounters here. I wonder if they're in here. And this guy also seems to be like he's been stabbed by a bunch of wood, considering all this extra stuff hanging off his back is all wood. And then again, hole going right through his stomach. Must feel great. But he seems to be protecting a candle in hand. He's probably always hungry. Probably. For all we know, this could be famine. Could be. All I can think of is the four horsemen of the apocalypse now. Isn't it war, disease, and famine, and death? Maybe, actually. Mm, pestilence. Not disease, pestilence. Pestilence. You're close though. Actually, I guess you could relate these to all of one of them. I'd go famine with one with a hole in the stomach. Um, hmm. I'd probably go war with the ones whose hands are chained together, just because war prisoner. And probably pestilence for the last one, considering the Holy Grail is supposed to heal. So. That might be good. Just be like, holy watcher, it will heal me or maybe keep me alive for a long period of time. Well, if you think they're the four horsemen, then who's the last one? They're all skeletons. No, this one. Oh, I wasn't thinking him at all. No. I was just thinking these three guys. Considering the last one has to be death. Well, actually, he could be. He could be the one that kills him. Since could mom. be. I'm not sure. It just seems like if these guys are the three horsemen, I don't think this little guy would be the fourth one. Got anything over there? Well, I was looking through. There's a lot of encounter cards, and I was trying to see if any of them look like those characters. Is that one of them? No. No. Wait. So my guess is that I think the purple ones are the highest level ones based on the skulls up here. See how they have skulls up there on the top? So I think that must Ooh. be difficulty. So I was thinking they might be some of these guys, but I don't see... Wait, stop there. Found him. Yeah, that is the guy. So he's the f he's called the Four Dweller. Do you want to show the card? There's two of the cards for him. So this guy right here, one I showed you earlier with the double-edged spear, is apparently called a four-dweller, or at least pretty sure he is. It's one of his cards. Apparently he's a um, three-lantern difficulty. They're not skulls. Oh, is it lantern? Sorry. Well, they're technically like gemstones. But it's four, by the way, not three. Four. Four-lantern difficulty. So I think... We just got a stack of cards that came with this. Those are encounters. If you want to show a few of them, you can. They have different backs. So I'm not sure if, like, they're for certain encounters for certain areas, maybe. Because they have different, like, they're green back ones. And then there's purple back ones. And then over here I have blue back. See how they have blue in the corner? And then I also have white. So it's, it's in different corners, too. Maybe the die comes out, like, north, south, east, west, or maybe. Does something with that. I see what you mean. 
green seems to be in the bottom uh, right. Mm -hmm. Purple is in the top right. Blue's in the top left, and then white's in the bottom left. So it might be something to do with the area you're in for the color, or maybe it's the the dye that we looked at earlier that had that north, south, east, west. Or difficulty, like you said. Yeah, because maybe the dice have something to do with it. Maybe. It's a quite big possibility, actually. So for some of these, we're just going to go over this one. We have Glade Hair, uh, a Frenzied Boar, a Royal Elk, and those are some level 1 ones, a Trap Door Hunter. Kind of looks like a spider. Vengeful Druid. Well, that person must not like Maggot at all. Traveling Merchant. Well, that one's not an enemy or something that attack you. Cool. So there's some ones here that aren't attackers. Makes sense. These are encounter cards. But this one's like, Traveling Merchant. Draw three random items. You may buy any craftable item from this pile for one wealth or any other item for two wealth. You may sell any of your items for one wealth. Cool. And then we have the Elder Tree, which also has some... Abilities, but we're not going to go over them because spoilers. But whenever this game comes out, I suppose shuffle this card pack. It's a saved encounter. It says, "Do not open. Do not shuffle this card pack." So we're going to just put this back. Okay. Put that in here so we don't mix it up with the other cards. Whispering wisp. Whispering wisp. Whispering wisp. Wisp. I can't say it. You know, sass. Okay. You try. Whispering wisp. Whispering wisp. Whispering wisp. I feel bad now. Whispering wisp, whispering wisp, whispering wisp. There you go. Hey, I got it. Wasn't that bad. I can't say any faster than that arm screw it. Apparition. Those are always fun. Especially when they're glowing green and they kind of look like movable fire. Oh. Huh. Would you guys agree? The apparition kind of looks really green. The what? The apparition. Apparition? Yes. This is why I don't like that. I can't talk today. Can you talk any day, though, really? Sometimes. Depends on what I'm reading or saying. Okay, I think you've showed enough encounters. Should we continue on? So there are lots of encounter cards, though, of different types, varying levels. So I'm not sure how I we use them yet. Snack. Yeah, this He's is another snack. One. So those appear to be all the monster cards, at least the low-level ones. There are also apparently are weather effects. He's right. We've got a section for good weather, heavy rainfall, dense mist. Oh, and some of these have gnarly effects, too. Full moon. Oh, does that mean there's werewolves somewhere that'll come out and eat you? Might be. I don't know. Oh, we have a blood moon, too. That doesn't sound good. The howling gale. Beautiful weather. Wow. Right after full moon, blood moon, and howling gale, we have beautiful weather. Fun. Did you show some of the cards to the camera? I don't know if you did. I no, wasn't I have watching. not. I wasn't watching because I'm I'm flipping through cards right now. So we have good weather. That's why I'm so quiet because nice I'm interested. Nice beer thing. It's quite a few of those. Heavy rainfall. So it looks like a really cloudy day. Violent thunderstorm. Sounds like any storm that would flood. Dense mist, little character entirely lost somewhere in its clouds. Doesn't sound very fun for him, though. I think that's enough of those for the weather effects. Oh, and then wandering beast. Okay. That doesn't sound good. like how the weather can be a wandering beast, though. Order of the day. Yeah, I was going to have you show look at those next. So they have, like, help cards. You know, a lot of the games that have cards have help cards. So this one had two different sets of help cards that were back and front for each four for each player, I think. One for each player. And then there was an extra one at the end that had, was combat overview, so how you fight. Yeah, we have Order of the Day, Icon Glossary. Oh, that's going to be helpful for me. And so we learn them all. Overview. You have a better memory than me, so. I do. Because I'm weird. No, you're not weird. You're just better than me. And I think these are map cards. Really? Because I did realize there are no tiles in this. 
Well, I mean, look at this. Look, these are all tiles that all have higher numbers too. So they start off like, what, 101? And then go up to like 160 something, I think. And then they also have arrows going in different directions. So it looks like, like that said 102 at the top, right? And what does that say right there? 101. So I'm guessing, and this is card 102? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing like when you set it up, you know, you'd set it up like you're a building. map, right? That's what I'm guessing is that you're building a map as you play. So the different tiles, you're not showing all the tiles, by the way. You're off the camera a little bit. Oops. I can. So like. So it looks like as you play, maybe you only have certain cards you use for certain maps. You know, like you use the map, this map, this map. I'm not sure. We'll, uh, whenever we get around to actually playing the first opening scenario, we'll, we'll try to show more of that off to, to show how it looks. Okay, let's not put them all down. Seems put it back to be an up. entire world. Yeah, let's put them back up for now. But yeah, it looks like, and then on the back of them has special things on it too. Like things about the area, if you look at the back. It has like a whole explanation of the area and other stuff going on about it. What is this? Quanhacht Farmold. Gesundheit. Well, it could be Quanhacht, but it's C U A N A C H T. Quanhacht. Okay. Haha. -ha. Is the cards. Thank you. So without the tiles in the game, that actually makes this one probably a little bit uh different. No, no, I was gonna say easier to pick up and put away. Oh yeah. That was my thought. Because like I don't know if you all have seen anything with Madara yet, but Madara and uh Gloomhaven have lots of tiles in both games. So it requires a lot of maintenance to uh, pick up and put away the tiles and to find the one you're looking for in some cases. So it just requires a lot more space to kind of – and take time to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So we also have this is Secrets. Secrets. I love these secrets. It just literally says Secrets. And if you – I looked at a couple of them. They look like items. So my guess is you unlock – when you unlock Secrets, you get – like, I guess, free items or things? Uh, yeah. That's what it looks like. And they're all numbered. Did you mix these up? No, I left them all alone. I'm, this is straight out of the pack. I'm trying to keep, keep them all in the same so direction. Here's the thing. Case. The numbers are all out of wax. So it's like... So all these secrets have little numbers on the back right here in the middle. It's like, this one goes to 15, and then it goes 73. And 19 is like 4... Oh, wait. I, okay. I just opened this randomly, and there's number 4. 19's right there, like five cards ahead of 15. So best guess is that all the numbers are out of order. For some reason. Probably to keep track of them or something. No, unless that's what the actual these? order that you find them in the game. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out when we get to playing. Ooh, what are these? I don't know. They were just numbered, and they have different things on the back. Courage... So it's almost like there's some sort of boons or negative effects, maybe? Oh, they match these. Or do they? Yep. This one's aggression. Courage. That one's caution. There's one for practicality. Empathy's right after that. And I guess the ones in the ends are probably spirituality. Yep. Okay. So these are probably bonuses for your um, six things you have on the two sides of your card. Probably adding bonuses or decreasing negative effects or something like that. So you must get them during the course of the gameplay. Yeah. I also think that they may be used as like points to use certain abilities. But since I'm not quite sure what entirely the abilities are, it's hard to say. Yeah, which we'll have to get in more when we read the rules and get a little further in. Yep. Ooh, diplomacy. And this has the symbols for spirituality, empathy, and caution. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what I just saw, so I'm just going to go, hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't understand what the back of this card says. Show the camera. Okay. The top one is this. What is it called? I can't see it. It is called Flash of Insight. All right, so it looks like you have symbols up here, which must, must match something for the characters. 
and then it says if destroyed, maybe I think that might be destroyed symbol. You get to go down and draw a card. So it must be effects that happen during the gameplay. Probably random draws that you have something happen and you have to do whatever the effect is on the card. Or since it says diplomacy, maybe you're supposed to negotiate. Maybe you can negotiate with different races or different groups of people to hopefully trying to survive, considering you live in a twisted version of Celtic mythology and Arthurian religion. I mean, le- legend, not religion. It's legends. Religion is that what you said? <laughs> yes, it's an Arthurian religion. Arthurian like. legend. I said Arthurian religion. And I'm like, Arthurian no, religion. it's legend. Not, not Arthurian religion. No, oh. considering I think most of that group was Christianity. What have you got there? These are combat cards. So I'm wondering if you actually have a hand of cards that you play with, maybe. And it looks like you get to choose okay. whatever's on the card. So maybe you have a deck of cards as you play. And maybe you play them and get new cards. As you go. That could be what diplomacy is, too. Maybe you get special cards from diplomacy at random that you can use to help you fight monsters or things. I think he's very correct. Yeah, I haven't actually watched gameplay for the game yet because I was kind of waiting until it came in so we could actually start ourselves. But uh, there's definitely a lot in the game, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll put those yeah. in there, too. There's the diplomacy combat. I put the encounter stuff here, but it's not... I don't have enough space. Item? Oh. So items go up here, it looks like. The box is kind of nice because it does have a lot of spaces to put stuff. If that's his real name. Pestilence? Actually, that's what I've nicknamed these things. You know, it might tell us on the back of the box. It doesn't. Pestilence? Until I know these characters' names, I'm just going to call them... It just says high-quality models. Let's see if the, the rule book maybe has a uh, like description of parts in the game. Possibly. It does. Who the heck are these three? So that one guy is a four dweller, the one we thought. Okay. And those are the men here models. Uh, They're just called the three men here models. Okay. So. Then that means I'm going to call him Pestilence. War. Sure, why not? Famine. So then I'll figure out which ones I'm talking about. Also, these are going to be a ton of fun to paint. The purple ones say they're larger than the red ones. They are. Yeah. I didn't notice that. They're oh. called large markers. The other one, the red ones, red ones are just called universal markers. Ah. Oh, and the dice with the X on it is called a guardian dice. A guardian die. Uh, that's what the guardian was for the signals. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I will okay, put them back. Pestilence first. Sideways? Ah, they must go sideways. Here's Famine. Here's Fanboy. What? No! Did I say something wrong? Famine, not Fanboy. We're not talking about people that read fan fiction about anime. Mm. Okay, Fangirl, I put a Fangirl in there. No, I'm the Fangirl, not them. She's so touchy. Yes. You've already knew this. Did I? Yes. I don't know. This guy. Then we have revealed location. Who, me? Yes, you. She's so fun to taunt sometimes. Who, me? Actually, all the yes, time, really. you. I know that from somewhere, and I can't think of where. Oh, that's part of a song I sang for Alice in Wonderland. A 
a fun song. No, it isn't. It's stuck in my head now. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. Yes, you. It's the very merry unbirthday to you. Ah, For the Queen of Hearts version. Here's revealed locations, since I'm not sure what to do with these. Well, it's not revealed locations. There were You didn't look at the card. It says revealed locations on both sides and saved events on both sides. So my guess is these are placeholders. Like when you reveal locations, maybe you put this, uh, put them underneath and put it here. Like this could be a discard pile. Because then under here you have special one all the way through A. And then you have chapter stuff here, part one, part four. It just keeps going on with chapters. So at the very end here you have chapter one, part one. So I'm guessing that this is like a story or a story uh -huh. that you read. At least that's what it looks like. Yeah. You don't want to show off the tokens? Here's the tokens. Wow. I showed them off. Wow. Okay, so these are the skull tokens we were talking about earlier that have the runes going around them. You can't see them very clearly for multiple reasons, considering that they're also in a bag and also they're really tiny, so they don't really show up. Just take one out well. if you want. I don't care. I said I got into it yet. <laughs> Or maybe we won't show it off because she's late. Who knows? No, I can't open the thing. Okay, I'll put it down. I'll open it in a second. Uh, uh, I got it. I think. Yes. Yay, they've got lots of skulls, and I'm just dropping them under the table. Yay! I'll show them off because it has specific things on it. Did you look at it? It has numbers. That's what lines up for you to figure out the secrets hidden in the book. Yeah. And then the tiles that don't have skulls on them too, right? Nope, they have balls. All of them have skulls. Oh, I see. What's on the back then? Back was Holy Grail. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Well, this is weird. Yes, yeah, so they seem to be labeled 1 through 10. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, I'm wrong. I labeled one through eight for each of these. There's a these bunch more diplomacy little cards. Skel skeletons. One is at the very bottom with eight over here by my thumb. Over here. And then we have five at the very top. And these are rearranged in a point where they could go in any order. And they'll be pointing at the very bottom one, so this one could be like. This and the number would be five, two, one. So that would probably give us a code that we can do for the back of the book. Okay, I'm gonna take these tokens now. I've got a bunch of tokens, tokens, tokens. Yay, tokens! They provided a bag that reseals. Ooh, good. I'll put them in the bag that reseals. What do you got there? Oh, no stuff I just opened. And I found these cards, too. I found more diplomacy cards, so I stuck them all together. And then we had these cards on top. So remember we were talking about those different colors? Yep. Look, here they are. Yep, advancement. Combat and diplomacy have the four colors that are on the sides of the cards. So that might be for when you draw one. Maybe you have to draw the corresponding monster out of the pool. I don't know. Oh. When we actually play it, we'll look at it and figure it all out. So. Those aren't going to fit there. I'll put them in here. Okay. Then the last set of cards we're going to look at, because we're going to look easier, are the ones that say, you are going, going insane. insane. So I mentioned this earlier, that, um, again, when your terror gets to five or six, on the side of your thing, I should probably get this out, it helps. Yeah, show it again. Right here in the terror section, but you can't see. Right here, there's a section labeled terror. Towards the top, there are two red spots here and here. Right next to it, like right where my finger is, it's little tiny letters. It says, going insane. Right there on the side. That's what we think these cards are, is that what the well, effects of... It's not only you are going insane. Ooh, what is There's it? also you are dying, dying in co-op. And you, you are, are dying. dying. Wait, what is... Here, show them all. They have things on the back. 
Okay, so also I mentioned that when your health gets to zero, you're also dying, and when your energy gets to one or zero, you are exhausted. So apparently, there are like four cards for you are going insane. There are four cards for you are dying co-op, and then there's just a you are dying card. Wow, that that's a fun effect. Why they have one for co-op and why they have one for non-co-op makes no sense to me. My question is, where is the you are going exhausted cards? Well, you don't get exhausted in this game. Uh, no, it says right there. When your energy gets to one or zero, it's right next to you. It says exhausted. Ooh, I wonder if these are your health counters. They are. So here's how I think they work. And you must move them up and down as you get more or less health. It's kind of cool. Oh, where your health is probably has like your max number or something. Well, then energy and terror on the side. So as you get lower in health, I guess you have you get more or you lose. You're going oh no, you're going saying higher. I don't know. I don't know how it all works. We'll try to figure out whenever we do the stream, but they do have those little health counters that seem to move things up and down on your track. So we'll see how it all works when we get there. But that will not be tonight. Uh -uh. We still have two more boxes to go through. So this was just what's in. The base campaign box. You didn't show these off. No, I haven't gotten to them. Well, you're slow. I know I'm slow. I'm not crazy. I didn't say you were crazy. Well, you might be going insane later. Yes, I may be going insane here. I may be going absolutely terrifyingly crazy later. Well, it could be worse, right? Yep, it could be entirely worse. So, back to the theme of the Holy Grail. All these yellow tokens here are have the Holy Grail on them. Uh, those are called quest tokens. Well, I've quested them into getting into a clover form. Okay. And those are called time tokens. Well, that kind of makes sense. they got an hourglass on them. Yep. I'm trying to have fun with them at the moment. Let's not have fun. Let's continue so we can open up the other box. So I got a thing for you right there to put them in. Okay. An extra bag. You know, one of these bags is probably for the red thing, which you put in with the other bag. Yes. It's fine. It's fine. Actually, you know what? These bags might be for the counter. Probably. There you go. I got a bunch of holy grails. Same size. Our glasses. Yeah, it looks like they're the same size. Okay. All right, we're just finishing putting everything back in the box. They go in there. Because we still have two more boxes to look through. Uh, one is called the Monsters of Avalon. So I wonder if these are going to be... All uh, the monsters we just went Maybe through. they're all going to be miniatures of all some of the monsters that we looked through the combat or the monster encounter decks earlier. You see, you are going insane. And... Characters. Okay. You want to show the last, last, let me take that out for a second. Just show everybody how the box works in case they didn't see it earlier. Monsters are up here and then the characters go on top of them. There's a lot of empty space here. and I don't know what, what decks go where yet, so I just kind of separate them out a little bit. Maybe the expansion gives you more cards so they Maybe. spare some room for it. Maybe. Yeah, there were several expansions for this game. I picked up a few of them, but they're not ready yet, so I'll be getting those next year at some point. Put the other things back in. I'm working on it. No, I'm telling you. Put the other things back in. I don't know what the order was. Journal entries. Now the journal. Then it was this. That. And then that. Okay. So, oh, we forgot this. I don't care at this point. Let's take it out. Because if we flip the box over, all the cards and everything are going to fall out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh, come on. It's not that much stuff. Tick tock, tick tock. Hungry, Mr. Grin? You know, that's going to my head. 
I can't help you there. All right. Now we put the plastic back on, so at least it won't go everywhere. Now you just put everything back in. I am. Settle down. So grumpy. Tick tock. Tick tock. Anybody hear the tick tock croc? I do. Where's Captain Hook when you need him? He's in the croc would chase him. All right. There we go. Yay! So we have, we also have a surprise box. We're opening that afterwards. Yes, we're going to open that one at the end. So this will be the end open, because it's not a very big box, so I'm not sure what's going to be in that one. And now we have... Monsters! 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 The Monsters of Avalon. Is that King Arthur, or is that his father, is my question. I don't know. Why don't you open it? Let's take a look. So let's see what's inside the Monsters of Avalon box, now that we did the base game box. Okay, so... Are you having trouble? That's a small... It's half the size of the other box. So this one looks like the horse is riding and got a guy. Oh, it has pictures of all the miniatures. It's probably to help you figure out where they go. Right? That's nice. It's nice they provide a picture for you. I'm just going to put them all right back. there. They so look think, so realistic. Like I can reach it and get... Oh, I can't. I can't get them. It actually looks really realistic. Except then you have this, and then it's like... Oh, and then for some reason, it shows you the, the back of the box, too, I guess. It's kind of funny. Who would have thought they would have included the back of the, the box in there? It's kind of weird. It's not the back of the box. It's the empty box. Oh, is it the empty box? Oh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, because the indents are going in. Gotcha. Okay, I see. So one side's the... <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird they would include a picture on the back of the empty stuff. So you want to pull out some of the characters so we can take a look at them? Just bought the whole thing. Set it right here. And yeah, it's just a bunch of... So we don't have a guide for what these are exactly. Oh, they're on the back. We should have, we should have flipped over the box. Well, apparently we got a seal with a mermaid for on, on. So apparently the back of the Monsters of Avalon box, we didn't turn over at first, has the names of all the monsters... Oh, I'm pulling What's a it? silky. Oh, is that a silky? That's the river uh, nymph. In my creature. opinion, it looks like a seal with a mermaid coming out of its mouth as a tongue. There's a hell pig. Ooh, where's the hell pig? Uh, is that one? Kind of looks like a wolf ish character. Nope. I have the wolf walker. That's the wolf walker. Literally looks like a wolf with skeleton bones. He does. The mulch man. That's ah, a fun name. Here we are. Huh? Found the hell pig. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, the miniatures are in the box very tightly. So if you are going to get the game, just be careful and when you're pulling them out. Because we had some trouble with the other characters. These look like they're just as tight. So. Yep. At least they won't move very easily. So that's good. Here's a hell pig. In my opinion, he looks more like a boar. Well, but boar's a pig. True. Except this one's armored. Well, there's a bird in there called Hammerbeak. <laughs> there's an angry mob. Hammerbeak? Yep, that's Hammerbeak. Hammerbeak. Okay, I've got to find this angry mob, because you mentioned it. It's it's guys, three guys on a tile, like three villagers, one with a pitchfork, one with a... An axe and maybe Got a torch. Him. It's just kind of funny. It's like a, a group of three people on one miniature. Yeah, really tiny people. In your hand. It's kind of funny. There's also a sloth, which is also three people on a miniature. With a spear. And the two axes, it looks like. And they're kind of like being swallowed up by hands that are popping up out of the ground. Look, it's this one. Ah, sloth. Slog. Sloth. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Here we are. Did you find it? It's actually a pretty big one. Oh, wow, that is big. Bigger than I thought it would be. Looks like they're trying to bring the undead back to life. There's literally just tons of hands right here. Yeah, there's a bunch of hands sticking up. So some of these I remember seeing when I was looking through the uh, encounter Ooh, I knew this one. In the other area? What? Uh, That's the tainted no. elk. The warped elk. Yeah. You know, if you're going to show them, we probably should move the box a little bit, because they're kind of blending in with the other, other creatures. 
got a tainted elk. A tainted elk. Come on, go back and look. See it. There's a weird child. Looks like a brain on a stick or something. Right here. Oh, I know who that is. Use brain. So this box is a box you can use in addition to the base game for having real characters on the board versus. I didn't see any tokens actually. That's not enemies. creepy at all. <laughs> Oh, the back's flat. I didn't realize the back was flat. That looks really weird. Um, it's a ring of bones. Is it? <laughs> it's, it it's, it's literally layers on layers of bones, and over top of it is a sheet of fabric that makes the back part of this guy's cloak. Yeah, he's a child and weird, all right. Oh, wait, I have to ask. What the heck is this? Worm tangle. Okay, I've got a worm tangle. And I'm pretty sure there's a hydra in here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The worm tangle is that one. Uh, that's okay. the underbrush worm, excuse me. Okay, I found underbrush the underbrush worm. worm. I didn't realize there were two worm creatures. Yeah. Here's the worm tangle. It looks it's like basically a hydra. hydra. Yeah. Let's see. Let's find another weird one. Okay. Here's the guy I really want to ask about. The thing that looks like King Arthur and a horse. Knight Errant? Okay. I've got a Knight Errant. These would be interesting whenever you get around to painting these because they have a lot of edges on them. Lots of detail. Lots of detailed edges. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Oh, this one looks weird. Looks like a mountain. Is that the Mulch Man? Yes. Yeah, that's Mulch Man. He sounds like a superhero. No. Actually, yeah, he sounds he like... He reminds me of... Uh... Let me see. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of Swamp Thing. You're right. It's just with more tree stumps. Yeah, yeah. Like a wilder version of Swamp Thing. You have a Mist Bear who's this tall, ghostly thing in a tree holding lanterns. Here he is. His face looks like a goat. They have a lot of creepy undead looking things in this game. A lot of bones. Lots of bones and lots of rib cages that are showing up. Oh, they have female. They have a bow maiden. That's a small one, it looks like. I'm not going to figure out. I don't know where she is. Oh, here you are. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. She's got little, like a tree growing out of her back. Okay, I've got to ask what this weird thing is. Warped one. Warp head. Warped one. Yeah, it's warped one. You're right. Warped one. This is a warped one? Is that his head? That's the long part? Is it like a long stretched neck with a weird head on the end? Is that what it yes. is? <laughs> oh, creepy. It's like these things are on a Silent Hill or something. Uh, no, it's not. It's not just his head. Um... His joints are going inward. Oh, sweet. Um, his legs are longer. Specifically, the lower half of his leg is longer. Hmm. His entirety of his arm is entirely warped. And he's bending very unnaturally. Look, it's literally wrapped around the bark. Oh, my God. It's to the point where it's touching, almost touching the back of his leg. There are a few other ones in here, but they've looked very similar to some of the other models. So I don't know if we need to show those off today. I'm going to show you one more. Okay, one more. That is the Four Dweller Reclaimer. Yeah, the Four Dweller Reclaimer. Holding a scepter and also looks about ready he's to a person? break this guy's yeah, neck Yeah, he he's holding a person in his hands on his neck. Yep, looks like he's going to break the guy's neck. Creepy. There aren't really any major other people. Yeah, there's a lost knight. Just looks like a knight holding a sword. Not very exciting. Yeah, and then there's this thing. Dullahan? Oh, there's a guy with a long whip or something that's called a Dullahan on a horse. Ah, uh, that's the one I was actually about to Okay, about. that's the Dullahan. Is it a whip or what is it? Is that a snake? I can't tell what it is. Well, the end of his whip kind of looks like the same head they have on the warped one. Does it? Yeah. Could be a creature of some sort then. I don't know. Could be. It's interesting. Because it looks like it's an octopus. Oh, there's also a weird bear. We missed that earlier. Yes, he's right here. He has a very bony looking mouth. That's because his mouth is double layered. Excuse me. 
Double layered mouth. Yeah, so he's got like a weird mouth and then he's got like a skeleton uh, head on top of it. Gotcha, okay. And then he looks entirely covered in rock and armor. Looks like there are people on him. Are those armor or is that people? It might be armor, I can't tell. It's, it's hard to tell bones. with the picture. Okay. On top of his head is animal bones. Looks like we have human eyes on his side. Maybe that's what I saw. I thought I saw a skull or something on the side. Nope, I see eyes. Okay. And ribs showing again. So that's pretty much everything in there. I don't think we showed the Child of Morgan or Lost Knight. That's about it. Are we talking about the thing that kind of looks like Man Bat? Yes, that's a Child of Morgan. Yeah. One of Morgan's a vampire. Does that would fit. It looks like Man Bat, and then except his wings have been clipped, and and the and hanging from the tips of them are skeleton heads. Like, right here are just, like, two different skeleton heads. And then he's wearing, like, man bat attire. He's got the giant ears. Yeah, now it's everybody. I said Lost Knight, but we're good. Okay. So those are 20 more models in, for use in the game. Of course, entirely optional buy. If you don't want it, you probably would not have to get it to play the game. Oh, yeah. This is so I can put these back in later. Yes, exactly. Because those things are a pain to figure out how they go in. So I think that just leaves our surprise box now. So yes, hopefully if we have a chance this weekend, uh, might not be till Sunday, possibly. We'll try to do some gameplay. Might be kind of late though. I think we have dinner to go out to. Yes. But hopefully we'll be able to read the instructions, catch up on what we're doing, and hopefully try to play the first scenario at least so we can see how it plays. Because I'd like to do that. Yeah. It's like a different game on the back. Oh, there's one. It looks like an art book, maybe. Oh. So on the back of the surprise box, first let me show the box again. We had a surprise box here. And then on the back of it is something called the ISS Vanguard. So they did another game that I have, but I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head. And when I got the game in, I got a box similar to this, and it was a promo for this game, actually, Tainted Grail, which was funny because I got that game after Tainted Grail had already finished raising money on Kickstarter. So it was like, oh, good thing I already backed the game, because if I was waiting for this, I would have never known it was coming out. Oh, we have an almanac. Oh, what's in there? An almanac of Avalon. <gasps> Yay! I love Avalon. Oh, we we have a a sealed envelope too. Oh no! Oh no no no! It's a pretty big box, big thing. Let's take a look. That looks like the map. Here's has the east and the boar of Camelot. It's literally explaining different places. This oh, this is what's cup. in here. So this essentially is a note for Kickstarter backers, for anybody who backed it. They're thanking us for the game. Apparently there are over 700 cards, over 100,000 words of the story, and over 1,000 unique arts in the core box only. Because they had a lot of artwork in the books and, and other places, I think, that we saw. Yeah, this is literally just explaining things. So it's kind of like an art book, it looks like. Yeah, it pretty much is. It's like hand-drawn pictures mm -hmm. with um. They're also labeled east north. They're also labeled north, south, east, and west. Like the die. Yeah, like this one's south here. I oh. just went through north. So this is a hundred-page long encyclopedia of Tainted Grail that you can use to expand your knowledge of Avalon, its strange places, its dangers, its people, and their customs. Each entry was annotated by one of the characters from the game, providing a unique perspective. Oh, like, here we have Avalon's Curious. Yeah. It's a bunch of artifacts. It looks like, hey, there's a dice. So it's almost like they're travel journals of the characters, the four main characters you play as. I think they actually are labeled. I think the characters might actually be labeled from different areas. North, in south, the land. east, west? Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're different areas in the land. So it's like they're four heroes in different quadrants of the area that yep. made this almanac together. There's a lot of artwork in it. It's kind of cool. 
Lots. And the other item here is the ISS Vanguard art book. It's an art book filled with amazing art for the next major board game that will be going live sometime in 2020. Hey, here's the work of Pestilence. Of course it is. See? That's right, there is a Pestilence in this game. Considering he looks like he's covered in spores. Let's see a pile of skeleton hands, virtuals with knives, chicken legs, like feet, weaponry. Ooh, then we have the danger, dangers of the wilderness. Wilderness. Wow, really funky looking creatures in here. Okay, that's that doesn't look bad at all, Daddy. Little kid eating a hand. Well, it's an arm, not just a hand. True. It's Part of the arm. lower arm he's eating. Yep. So for anybody interested, the Awakened Realms group uh, were also the makers of Nemesis, which we also have that we're going to stream at some point. Uh, that's like a an alien movie based game, uh, kind of like Alien. Or any of the alien movies where you're on a spaceship trying to repair it and get back to Earth or wherever you're trying to go before you get killed by the aliens or you die. They also made uh, Lords of Hellas, The Edge. Downfall. 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 Something like that. And The War of Mind. They made the board game for The War of Mind, the video game that they made, uh, somebody else made. And Siege Storm, it looks like. Yeah. All right, let's open up the art book here for the ISS Vanguard, and then I think that will be it for the stream for tonight. If we can get this open. It's been stolen! Good. Good for you. Yes, yeah, so for anybody who likes the looks of this game, uh, they're apparently having a new one called ISS Vanguard coming out sometime 2020 in Kickstarter if you back those kind of things. Take a look at the campaign. Can't do it like that. Just look at it that way and then we'll put it on camera if you see anything interesting. <laughs> Red planet. That looks like Star Wars right now, doesn't it? The new Star Wars? Because they're on like a sandy planet with the TIE fighter going along the planet. Pretty much. So here looks to be different types of ships or maybe weaponry. No, it's yeah, probably ships. These look like ships. More I would think they're ships, yeah. Guns. Then we have like a nicely drawn one. This one kind of looks like this one right here. Okay. Except it's missing the back. Thin. They like red in this game, apparently. A lot of red. Oh, there we go. Blue. Cybertron. Cybertron. I don't think it's a Transformers game. I know, but the first thing I think it was Cybertron. That picture. Okay. What else you got? Nope, never mind. That's it. Oh, uh, it looks more like Tatooine. Mmm, you're right. I don't know. Or a moon, a moon with craters. Lots of them. Okay, that look just looks like a pink Saturn to me. Is there a ring? Not Saturn, Jupiter. Oh, okay, I was going to say. Saturn has a ring, so... They've got swirling. Oh, yeah. Though, but I think the atmosphere looks a little too nice for Jupiter. Yeah, it's surprisingly blue, considering how purple the planet is. Or pink the purple planet is. Yeah. Here's an overly green one with... Oh, yeah. An orange sun, apparently. They really seem to like colors in this ISS Vanguard game. I wonder how, how how you play it. Because it looks like you have different planets and different things going on in each of the worlds. Well, this one looks like it's been lit on fire. Sweet. So it'd be like a... Uh, Burning planet. Venus. Yep. Or that... Well, that's just broken apart. That's cool looking. Well, looks like they're running for their lives right here. That reminds me of the Earth from uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., when they went to Agent yes. Sword in season six, I think it was, when the planet was broken, when Earth was all broken up. Yes. What the heck is that? 
multiple moons, it looks like. What is this over here? It's like a... S oh my god, it's Earth. Daddy long leg spiders are like... No, what? no, it's a um, is it a power, telephone pole. Telephone, oh. It has cords. Well, it might be Earth. They may be using that technology on a different planet. Here's before. a bridge. Where are the ruins of cities? <laughs> they should be there somewhere. Over there. Maybe this ball right here is actually Epcot. Well, actually, it's Disney being World. held up by something. We're dead. Yeah, that's Epcot. We're in Disney World right now in Florida. God. There's Saturn. Okay. Very orangey purple planet, though. Yeah. Okay, that know. moon just looks like it's in flames it right does, now. It does, it does. But the thing cool is, it's blended in with the things so that kind of looks like the moon is attacking the planet. Looks cool. It does. Laser. What are we doing? Halo? Yes. I don't know what that is. I've seen you play it before, but that's about all I can say. This planet doesn't look bad. It kind of looks like a pink version of Earth. This is plants. Let's keep going and see what else we got. Only a couple more left. Ooh, more stuff. I don't know. Rocky planet. Pinkish purple planet again and... Then something really green with two red moons. I see that, two red moons. That's interesting. The colors are interesting in the game. Because you wouldn't expect to see that many colors on all these planets. No. Well, this looks like a wasteland. It does, doesn't it? Kind of looks like a ship crashed here and all the um, metals kind of deteriorating. Oh, experience. is that a person? I see peoples. Peoples! peoples the peoples. peoples are coming. Star-Lord. <laughs> Star-Lord. What, he's holding Fistel. Is he? I can't really see. He's got the he's got a jacket on with the high collar, and then he's got the slicks back to the side hair. Should you should you show up the camera a little bit more so you can show them? I don't know. She says Star Lord. I don't know. Maybe. I haven't watched enough Star Wars to relate the Star Wars characters. I know Marvel characters better. I mean, if you're going to equate that, it'd be happy like Han Solo or somebody from Star Wars. Okay. He'd be the one holding the pistol. You're right. Well, this is a two-page picture. Looks like a ship about to hit cyber speed. Hit cyber speed? I know what I said. Cyber speed? I don't think that's what you were looking for. They're going for. flat! <laughs> I knew yeah, I got you that one. Space balls. I knew I think you, you were probably that. meaning like hyperspeed or light speed. No. Flat. They're going flat. They're going flat. flat. Well, that's ludicrous speed. Yes, that is ludicrous For all the space ball fans out there. This one's just crazy. I think I need to move the book back up a little bit farther, though. So it looks like we got, like, water and glowing Amoebas. Water. I don't know. Yeah. Ship sailing through, like, a... Uh, mm, between cliffs. Gotcha. Birds. So they're pod racing is what you're telling me in the bottom. <laughs> no, they're ship racing. They're ship racing? Not exactly what pods. What the heck? Is that a cube? Yes. It's like tofu. I don't want tofu. Well, but it looks like tofu. It does. It's like a black or white something. Looks like tofu. Kind of burnt marshmallow, too. Burnt marshmallow? It wouldn't be that square, though. True. Oh, then a close-up of a person with a space jellyfish. Yes, space jellyfish. I like she has a tattoo going from her collar going over her head and then... Nice That's her Bluetooth face. headset. Yeah, actually, kind of looks like that, too. <laughs> it does. Looks like those earbuds people in my school wear now. Yeah, the ones that go behind the head. Nice drawing of a ship. Rocket launching. Or a missile. A planet with anti-gravity and everything's floating. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm really curious what this game's going to be because the, the pictures don't seem to match what I would think it is. Cause okay, this is just thrown in here. Oh, what does that say? Uh, I have no clue, but it shows a bunch of warriors. It's an showing. elephant. It's an elephant? Ah, it's an elephant. They're elephants with, like, warriors riding on top. Hey, this looks really ready for this game. Considering it's a horse with skeleton bones for ribs. And a massacre. And knights. With chainmail and helmets and swords and horses. This is artwork by this person. Different artworks by this person is what it says. Ah. Oh. He's a German artist. The product is not a toy. <laughs> it's not a toy, it's a book. 
So that is a brief look at the new game coming out in 2020 is what the book said on Kickstarter. ISS Vanguard. I guess if you're interested, follow Awakened Realms to see what else they have. Or they have a website. Right www.isavanguard.com. ISA? It's ISS, I think. ISS Vanguard. All I can think of is in-school suspension. Or did you get an in-school suspension? No. It wasn't me. It wasn't you? <laughs> That's a good thing, right? All right, so the link, I did click on to see where it goes, and it goes to a Facebook page for the ISS Vanguard that talks about different things about the game and talks about the art book, it looks like. So so if you're interested in seeing more about that game, I guess go hit the Facebook link and you can follow that if you like. Other than that, I believe our time tonight is over. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching the brief stream. We weren't on too long. A little over an hour. Uh, just show an unboxing of the new game we got in, the Tainted Grail. Ah. Put that up here. Of course, this is the Almanac of Avalon, but it was the Fall of Avalon. Where's the box? Bring it up. Let's do our closing. Our closing remarks. Gotta give me a second. Here's the monsters. The monsters of Avalon. Mm. She's taking her sweet time. I'm not trying to. I think she's having trouble. Wow, you could have done without dropping the box on the table. So wimpy. Just put on top. This one's heavier, though. It'll be fine. It's not that heavy. It's not made of adamantium or anything. Oh, easy, I don't easy. want Wolverine. All right. See that? We've got a nice zoom in the picture. So thanks, everyone, for watching the Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon stream today, where we got to look at all the stuff in the core box, the Monsters of Avalon. Hey, pestilence. And the uh, secret box, which was basically just the art books. And thank you, Noah. And an almanac. Yes. And I think that is everything for us for tonight, right? So thank you for watching Day After Day Gaming. I'm Kat. And I'm Bobby. And keep on gaming day after day. And follow us if you like what you're seeing. Hopefully we'll get to stream this on Sunday uh, if we get a chance to. If not, look for it on Monday possibly. But uh, we're going to try to stream this soon, so stay tuned. Throw us a follow. Watch more. Uh, this will be up on YouTube soon as well, hopefully in the next couple days. Uh, most likely we will not be streaming tomorrow just because of the holidays. But uh, maybe something on Friday we'll try to knock out. We'll see. But, yes, thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful night.